Hi friend, I hope you're doing well. If you're new to this channel, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back. Today we're going to continue working on the painting from the last video. I'm going to add some depth to the horizon and tint the foreground a little to bring some of that alizarin crimson down into the landscape. But before we get started, go ahead and like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. But most importantly, share it with someone who you think might benefit from these fundamentals. I hope to hear from you, so go ahead and leave a comment below. I'm Kendall Stump, and welcome to The Stump Project. Okay, so this week, the, the changes that we want to make, they're going to be subtle, uh, but I think they're going to have uh, a big a big impact on this. So what I really want to do was I I, I, want, I want to push this background this this line of trees I want to push it back a little bit into the distance. I really like how they are. I like the color variations even though this was this piece here ended up being a little bit darker than this. I mean it just feels like okay clouds are casting shadow over this part of the tree and that's fine. It works out really really well. Uh, but I still feel that this this tree line is just a little bit dark and it competes with uh, the, some of the foreground elements. So we're going to push that back. Uh, and in doing so, we're also going to push back some of the clouds right here and kind of maybe lighten up the, uh, the, the cloud base that's further, that's further down. And again, the reason for that is the things at the top of the canvas are things that tend to be closer to the viewer. So and as things go away, like we talked, uh, the elements tend to take on more of the color of the, of the environment. So the further things go in the background, the more of, of the, this pinky hue uh, that it should take on. Now we're going to use about just three colors. We're going to use, uh, well, let's go over the colors. Here I've got just a small amount of uh, raw umber, a super small amount of alizarin crimson, and then some titanium white. Some of this other residue is on the, on the palette as a little bit of liquid. This stuff right here. And I use that to sort of prep the canvas. Uh, I put it over some of the areas that I'm going to be applying paint to. It makes the canvas a little bit more slick. It's going to help speed up the drying time of the glaze. Um, but I'm also using whatever's left on here. I'm going to help use it to help dilute um, dilute the, the paint and make it more transparent. These two paints here are relatively transparent. Titanium white is opaque, so we have to use the titanium white as a glaze very, very sparingly, or we will just completely paint out um, what, what we've got. Now, to put it on here, it's fine. We want to push it back, so we do want to lighten it up and, and kind of paint it out a little bit, but not so much. And we'll go over uh, how to do that. I also want to bring some of the alizarin crimson that's up here in the sky down here. We got the burnt umber. The burnt umber, I'm sorry, the raw umber is in the sky as well as in the landscape and that works. But what's missing I think is some of the of the this red down in here uh, to, to kind of add to the homogeneousness. Is that a word? Homogeneousness? <laughs> to, to add to the overall feeling of the unifying the painting. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just using a flat, this is a relatively big, big brush. Uh, it's a number 12 from the Evergreen collection from Rosemary & Co. Um, we're going to start right here in the middle. We're going to, with, with, the, uh, in, with the horizon line and, and the clouds. So what I want to do is whatever's left over from that uh, liquid, I'm just going to mix it up here. I already put a little bit of linseed oil and odorless mineral spirits, 50%, 50% mixture here on my palette. And I'm going to use that to help as my uh, glazing medium. Just take a small, small, small amount of the alizarin crimson. And we'll come in here and grab some titanium white. And what I'm looking for is just a that's a white with a, an, a slight pinky hue, kind of like this. I mean, you barely want to be able to tell that it's pink. 
And now what, some of the things I want to do uh, is like, like this area right here. Uh, I want to push this back a little bit, starting there. And then we're going to come down Just bring it down and you can paint right over top. You see, I'm going right over top of my tree there because we're going to wipe off what we don't want. So it's not that, it's not big deal at all. We're just starting with the clouds. We you, you you really want more of a of a gradient mixture going from dark to light. We didn't miss the mark on that a little bit, but that's okay. We can we'll get there. Uh, then we go right in here. We'll paint out these trees just a little bit. Maybe we can kind of see a little bit more. A little bit more um, depth in this right here, just like that. There, now what do you do? We're just gonna take a towel. And now you're not scrubbing. Um, I'm, just, I'm just lightly rubbing off, rubbing in. Swirling around, blending, giving it uh, a look closer to what I may, I think I want. You can push a little bit harder. Again, I try not to scrub. And you can, if you start to move around paint too much, you can uh, just, just, just find a new place on your towel or get a new towel. And you can just take that that white paint right off or that, that glaze right off. See how that pushed that, that tree line right back. And by removing by removing this the white paint on this foliage right here, it separates it from the background. And if we if we need to add more white paint, we can add more white paint. That's not a that's not a problem. Like if we feel that this isn't contrasting enough, we can add more. The only person that says you can is you. And if you like how dark it is, I'm just dabbing a little bit right there along that edge of that tree. I'm just dabbing a little bit. I'm not even I'm not even rubbing right there. I was just dabbing just to kind of remove some of that some of that paint. Let's add a little bit more of this white right through here. I'd like to bring this line of foliage forward just a little bit so it's lighting up the background. And then just to soften that edge and not wipe off all that white paint that we just put in there, I'll just dab a little bit and it's just going to give us a little bit of texture similarly to what we did uh, when we put in, uh, when, when we put the, uh, the, the, the leaves in, or the trees in. There. Right 
if there's any parts that you want a little bit darker, just rub a little bit more of the glaze away. Actually pretty simple, you can do this. Don't be afraid. And if you don't like what you've done, you just wipe it off. Yeah, I saw. I thought that this cloud, this dark cloud that we had in here, I thought it was a little bit too, too much. So that's why I wanted to make sure that I added added that uh, that glaze to that, just to kind of soften that, adds adds more of the darkness towards uh, towards the top of the canvas, and and allows it to to gradiate downwards. Uh, now let's go ahead and add in some of the uh, alizarin crimson. So I'm just going to take my brush, and I'm just going to I'm just going to wipe it off. And I want I'm going to take some burnt umber, some alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson is very very powerful. Just keep that in mind. Because I, I don't want this to be straight alizarin crimson because it is in the foreground. I do want it to be a little bit more contrasting and a little bit darker. Almost treating this as a vignette, uh, which is something that, that's darker around the edges uh, to help draw the eye into the center. Something like that. It doesn't take too much, really. And then you can add this glaze wherever you want. So if you feel the other parts maybe just need a little bit more uh, raw umber, go ahead and put that raw umber in there. Get a fresh towel because you obviously don't want to spread your white around. And the parts in the trees, I put some parts in the trees. Uh, I'm just dabbing that because I, I'm not necessarily wanting to, uh, well, like this, I'll blend, for example. Uh, but just because the value is so close, but if it's a little bit more contrasting, dab, and that way you can get some texture to come through as well. And I don't even think this needs to be blended so much. I mean, it, I'm looking for brush strokes. I'm looking for heavier pieces. I don't want any hard lines. Uh, I just want things to look um, as as though they're in shadow and not paint, just painted on there. So if I can make this just a little bit darker, a little bit. I mean, it's right straight into the raw umber. Right like that. And you see some of the paint, if you go lightly over top of it, it's more like a dry brushing technique where your your paint will just sit on top of high high marks and then or sit into the recesses and then you can when you wipe off you wipe off the high marks because of the way we put the texture on here and the paint dry the paint dries in peaks and valleys so it allows you that freedom to go in and, and do that And so you get some paint on your on your towel, and then you can transplant that paint if you like. You don't have to. Looks pretty good. The last thing that I want to do, I I'm and I'm I'm making this decision now as I'm looking at this painting. Uh, I think it'd be a good idea. We have this nice bright spot here, and we obviously have an illumination here in the background, right through there. Um, we have some nice streaks. I want to illuminate those streaks a little bit. I'm going to take just the tiniest bit of Indian yellow and a rigger brush. This here's a rigger brush. You see those really long tapered bristles on here. These kinds of things are made to to hold a lot of paint. Um, they used to use them to paint rigging on on ships and that's that's where it got its name. Uh, some other you can also call them liner brushes or, or what have you. 
Um, so what this is going to allow me to do is make nice, long, smooth lines uninterrupted. So I'm going to take a little bit of that Indian yellow. I'm going to put it into that white and alizarin crimson. Make sure that I have a little bit more white. I want this to be a nice, bright value. And you can see the, see the brush is really, really loaded. And I've already got some lines on here, and I just want to accentuate those. And I can wipe, and you're going to wipe that off. So don't worry about painting over. So what I'm doing, you can see it, the value pops out on that hill right there. So then I'm just going to take my towel and wherever I want it to soften, fade out a little bit. We'll just take some of that off. So that there, as it goes back into the tree line, soften that a little bit. We'll get a clean place on our towel. And we'll just take off the bits that were coming across the foreground elements. So then that's going to provide that depth. That's going to provide the continuity of something back there. So it starts on this side of this, of this tree or bush, whatever it is, and continues on the other side of it. So it's, it's projecting the illusion that there's a continuous plane back there behind that object. So adding the white increased the value of it, and it's right over top of this highlight, this light source area. I wasn't too worried about color for a couple of reasons. One is way up in the, in the distance, so it's going to be obviously more washed out. Um, and it's supposed to be snow as we go around. I mean, it's a field, so obviously some of this stuff back here looks a little bit more brown, and that's fine. We've established that there's foliage going on through here, and as the further back you go, you lose that contrast, you lose all that detail, so it may look just like swatches of color. And then if there's anything on here that you think needs to be touched up, you just dip right back into your uh, raw umber and apply whatever other details you may want to, to do that. This, this brush here, again, it's, it's just from Artist Loft. It's just one of those cheap brushes. I like them because they're natural bristles and they're great for texture. So some of the stuff that when you, when you glaze over and you rub it off, there's usually a little residue that stays behind. Nothing wrong with that. But uh, if, you, if it inter starts to interfere, you feel that it's interfering with your foreground elements, you may want to go back in and kind of touch them up a little bit. I'm just dab, 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 just dabbing. Let the bristles provide that texture for me. Places maybe where you want a little bit more shadow, let some other areas shine through. This is the opportunity to do that. That's the beauty of glazing. You can continue to add these different layers of elements. Uh, and then let this dry. And if you feel that you need to come back and add some more, you can do that. And just kind of build them up. Some of those, some of the old masters would put as many as uh, 30, 40, 50 more layers on top of their painting and it is so when you look at a painting you're looking through all of those layers and it really demonstrates depth it's kind of ridiculous in how it works but it 
it's just beautiful. I'm just making sure these things are, these, these gradations are, are smooth. Be super careful. I just put some, some brown, some uh, burnt umber on there and I don't want to uh, get some of that burnt umber up into the sky. You can use your finger for blending too. You'll notice that in some of my videos. I will do that. I'll go right in with my finger. I think it's a great brush. Um, there are some paints that you want to be very aware that you do not want. It's not, it's not recommended that you do this with. Uh, those would be the cobalts, the cadmiums. You don't want to do that. They're, they're toxic paints uh, for the most part. Um, Oil paints use a linseed oil binder, which is not toxic. Uh, of course, if you were to eat them, I mean, <laughs> that's not a good idea. Um, then it could cause some problems. Let's take a little bit of a little bit of that glaze off, just to add some. You don't want to flat continuous lay value so I'm just kind of breaking it up a little bit just adding like where this right here is probably more snow it's probably more reflective uh, it'll probably pick up a little bit more light in that one specific area so I'm just highlighting that a little bit maybe this area right here too just a little bit even though it's bounced light I'm just lighten it up just a little and this part right here would probably be right behind a frame so Probably wouldn't matter, but it's there regardless. And if you ever just, you want to add some more, just add some, take some paint on your palette knife and just put it in there. Again, this is just the glazing process and add to, take away, do whatever you want. Fulfill your, fulfill your vision. We'll just add a little bit there just to kind of break it up or break it up and, and add to the continuity of this little little highlights and just being subtle Where the where the sun comes down, it's just hitting on this some of this stuff. Even just a tiny, and if you can see on the camera, it's the tiniest little line right up in there, just to help. Just to help with that, the subtlety. Uh, any of that stuff, we just take our brush. This is this that regular, uh, like inch and a half brush or so. Uh, you just take the bristles and and uh, push it, push the paint up. That's how you get those strands of, of grass or other painters have used this technique. Uh, George Ennis, he's a great toneless painter. He's used this technique. Wherever you put that that paint that you want to pull up, just push it up, push it up. Got some, got some extra residue on your brush. Put it in wherever. Wherever you need a highlight, wherever you need is a little variation in color. It's just gonna look like twigs and sticks and a little bit here, a little bit there. It's great. Adds to the randomness. There, uh, I feel that this part right in there got a little bit washed out. I put a little bit on my finger. We'll just rub it in here and wipe it off. What we don't want.
And with this, I think we're going to sign it and call it done. So as you can see, depth can make a big impact. It's the subtle things. You don't need to make big changes to make a difference. I hope you enjoyed everything we went over and that you use this information to revisit some of your older work. You can find inspiration anywhere. Don't be afraid to look. Remember to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and check out my other videos. Let me know if you've got a question, and I'll see you next time.